sea is a fragment detached from the earth, a coastal city wrapped in steel and sent to sea to fight a war. This morning, within this iron metropolis, a population of 5,000 directs its attention toward one objective, to hurl Navy attack pilots out into the angry winds over enemy lands and then to bring them safely back again. Welcome to the United States Naval Attack Carrier Ranger, somewhere off the coast of an embattled land. His will is of iron, his wings are of gold. We could have a little quiet in the background. Hey, no, Hello, John. John. Hey, Shay. Hey, Jess, that's okay, where it's been. Okay, gents, we're event seven, Della. We've got the 1600 launch, 1745 recovery. Mission for today is strike. We're going against that bridge, which is on Highway 2, about seven miles north of Point 42. It's a well-defended bridge, about 150 feet long. It was up there in the area the other day, and I know that they'll shoot at you up there. So we got to keep heads up. Jack, if they open up on us after I start to roll in, I want you to try to put the flag side out. Okay. Hey, has anybody got any questions? Yeah, in case one of us gets hit, uh, what's a good punch out of Okay, you get hit over the target, or after t we go feet wet... This we morning, at, at a time when many men are fighting freeway traffic, this young man is preparing to do battle with a bridge. If it remains standing, Americans to the south will die. Perhaps hundreds of them. This man will risk and perhaps give his life to find the bridge and destroy it. It's his job. today's mission, as on those before and those to come, the Navy's best will fly the Navy's newest, the A-7 Corsair II.
For the next hour, the machine and the man will share a single heartbeat. All stations primary, one minute to launch. Catapults, 30 seconds, stand by, launch aircraft. He comes from the town, a boy when he sailed, and a man coming down. Heave away, Helmuli, heave away home. His will is of iron. this man racing the sun across the China Sea toward an angry bridge in the jungle. volunteers for this program. We're going to probe upon your minds and we're going to build your bodies. We're going to prepare you for the cockpit of that aircraft. The first thing we're going to teach you people is how to get your feet on the ground. How to get coordinated. How to march. As to a fly. Unit, how to look military. Here at the Naval Air Training Command, Pensacola, Florida, young men educated to be journalists or engineers, brokers or bankers, preachers or poets, trade in their white collars for wings of gold. But before these fledgling aviators can fly, they must first learn to walk. Naval aviation is among the most demanding professions in the world. The aviator will work with tools as delicate as those of a surgeon, as powerful as any man has ever made. He must be ready physically. His body must be as carefully tuned as the machines he will fly. and he must be ready mentally. As the naval aviator, his mind must conquer concepts few men have ever mastered. Developed within the cylinders, he must be part physicist, part electronics and armaments expert, part mathematician, and part tightrope walker. To become this airborne Renaissance man, the pilot undergoes training unparalleled in depth and scope before he ever touches an airplane. The result is a special kind of man. Pull hard to the bottom, level off to the left-hand side, and swim out. You ready? Ready.
After 16 weeks of exhaustive pre-flight training, 249 hours in the classroom, 12 flights with an instructor, and endless hours of briefing, the aviator does at last what he was born to do. After four more solo and six dual instruction flights, John Green is well on his way to becoming a naval aviator. He receives his commission and is ready for his next plateau, primary jet training at Meridian, Mississippi. During the next six months, he lives and breathes the T-2 Buckeye trainer. In high-altitude flights, high-speed formation and aerobatic flights, day and night instrument flying, he gets his first experience in modern jet aircraft. And on the ground, more courses. Aerology, communications, engineering principles of flight, special weapons, and naval officer training. And then the reward. Pitching and rolling in the Gulf. It didn't even look like a landing field. I've done it a dozen times on the simulated carrier deck. But things were different that first time on the real thing. With the landing field moving like that. Once carrier qualified, it's off to Texas to the advanced training command on a new aircraft, the F-9 Cougar, a swept-wing fighter capable of speed in excess of 550 knots. In it, he will make 80 flights totaling 120 hours in the air. Precision and formation flying become a matter of routine. After a year of training, John Green at last feels confident and perfectly at home in the air. John Green is a sailor, but first he's a man. His eyes on the eagle, his heart's on the land. A life to be lived is much richer by far when shared with another at home in the stars. Heave away. Heave away home His will is of iron His wings are of gold For the sailor who chooses his home In the wind There's seldom place where his path hasn't been He wanders the earth And he wanders the skies A modern Magellan With steel in his eyes Heave away, Emily of iron and his wings are of gold this is jason lee i'm drawing moderate fire from the west approach okay i'll take it
fluctuating pressure. Do you see anything? 2-1, I'm under you now. See some damage around your left main gear well. You also have some fluid coming out of your port and starboard wing fold. I recommend we switch to button six for Gray Eagle Tower. Roger, 10, switch. That east wind can give you a mighty rough deal. No way to bluff in a cloud full of steel. So you cinch up your harness and spit in his eye. The bets are on living, the limit's the sky. Now if you leave the wind transfer switch in emergency, and then some type of mystery to learn all show. there is to know about the A7 Corsair II. Within the shortest procurement time of any modern weapon system, this aircraft was off of the drawing boards and into the air. You are going to learn to fly it. But before you do, you are going to learn every function of its smallest component part. Let us begin our discussion today. John's destiny with the Corsair II began with his college dreams. As he dreamed, the Corsair II was being designed. When he first learned to fly, the Corsair was in manufacturing and testing. Now, proudly, as part of the Navy team, John's dreams become reality. Jason 2-1, this is Gray Eagle Tower. Understand you have some damage. Gray Eagle, this is 21. I have fluctuating hydraulic pressure, and it's getting lower. I have you in sight now. I'm going to drop my gear by the emergency system. Roger, 2-1. If you decide to punch out, the guard destroyer is standing by in our wake. Sleeps in silence, the day holds its breath. For dawn will bring victory, for dawn will bring death. Step off to the left, and I'll talk with the physiologist. When a naval aviator makes a combat strike, there are only two things that can happen. The plane either comes back or it doesn't. The modern attack jet can take an amazing amount of punishment. But in today's combat conditions, it's subjected to ground fire as concentrated as any that planes have ever faced. If the aircraft is crippled to the extent it is unsafe to land on the carrier, the pilot must eject. Techniques for survival in this event are a vital part of the aviator's training. They come under the heading of being prepared for the unthinkable. Thank you. 
His fist is a thorn. I'll sing of a sailor who sails off to war. Heave away, Emily. Heave away, home. His will is of iron. His wings are of gold. At what point in his life can a man say to himself, I know who I am and what I can do? At what point can he say, my life is my own, my destiny a product of my will? For Johnny Green, that moment has come. We've seen the airplanes, the ones these pilots make their first unpracticed hops in, and the one that rockets them through the clouds to their home in the wind. We've seen the people and the places that imbue these pilots with their capability and their honor. We've seen the giant ships that move them to the breach where that honor is challenged and where that challenge is answered. But most important, we've had a glimpse of a man, Lieutenant J.G. John Green, naval aviator, one among the many men of a unique cast who, because of their skill and character, chose the way of the eagle. of a sailor who now understands his life is his own his fate's in his hands there's more to this life than a merry-go-ride where there's no place to seek and no place to hide heave away Emily Quiet and some men live bold. Some men are tellers and others are told. And if you search for the uncommon men, go look for the sailors at home in the wind. Heave away, Emily. His will is of iron. 